a new challenger has appeared in the AI video space. It's coming in pretty hot and it's open source. Today, we're gonna dive into this new model that I expect that you will be seeing a lot of in the months to come. Plus, fully generated 3D worlds from just one image. Yeah, you're definitely gonna wanna check this out. This is, in my opinion, the future of AI generated imagery. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off, we have Hun Yuan video from Tencent. This is an impressive 13 billion parameter model that is actually open source. Yeah, the code is available right now, although we are gonna go over some system requirements. Uh, that said, let's take a look at the model itself because there's some really exciting and impressive stuff here. So Hun Yuan video is being touted as being comparable to, if not superior to, leading closed sourced models. Uh, so that is definitely shots fired at Runway and Sora. There are a couple of key features that give it the muscle to flex that statement. Uh, but the big breakthrough here is the fact that the model is trained on 13 billion parameters, making it the largest open source video model that is currently available. We'll go over how it works and some of those key features in just a minute. But first, well, let's take a look at some video examples. First up, we have this like futuristic SWAT team guy. Yes, he is rocking a motorcycle helmet, likely because he's about to crash that crime party in the name of justice. Overall, I'd say this is a pretty solid output. It's generating 1280 by 720, about five seconds long. Uh, the character stays very coherent. There's not any kind of like morphing or weirdness. Uh, hands look pretty good, although I do have to say I'll dock him a point on the trigger discipline there. Um, the helmet says safety first, the trigger discipline says, but only for me. Now, because of those 13 billion parameters, we are able to get more dynamic action in these outputs as exemplified in this motorcycle shot in which we are getting some pretty dynamic camera movement here uh, along with motion. Although, you know, if you dig into it, there are some problems. Uh, for one, like the motorcycle doesn't look like it has a front wheel. While I don't ride motorcycles, I'm pretty sure that that is not how handlebars work. The model does do pretty well with thirst traps. Uh, I mean, come on, whoever wrote the prompt? In a gym, a woman in workout clothes runs on a treadmill, side angle, realistic indoor lighting professional. I mean, they knew what they were looking for. Obvious compositional eyeline hooks aside. Uh, some things that I actually think are pretty impressive here is the fact that, well, A, her watch is actually maintaining consistency as she's moving her arm back and forth. Fingers look pretty coherent uh, as well. Hair bobs at the, you know, uh, correct physics of someone running. And then a very minor thing, but uh, one that I think is pretty cool is that you can actually catch her reflection in the window here. Uh, yeah, it's not 100%, but it definitely is reacting to her movement. The model also boasts the ability to be able to break single camera shots, as we see here on this riff on uh, the Sora man in the Parisian cafe. Uh, you know, of course, the idea being here is that we're getting two shots relatively in the same aesthetic, same character, same location. Uh, to me, this isn't that huge a deal considering that you're looking at five second output. So really it's like two, two and a half second shots. That said, this example kind of proves that you can get away with like, you know, five seconds and two shots and tell somewhat of a story. Uh, this being the story of a man who watched Dune too many times and is now wandering around the desert, just snorting a bunch of sand, hoping that he becomes the chosen one. Here's an example showcasing concept generalization the prompt here probably being something along the lines of a robot working in an office, although admittedly it comes off a little bit more like, you know, Bob from finance was told that he was going to be replaced by a robot. So he went out and bought a robot helmet and uh, thought to himself, uh, maybe no one will notice. Now, the big breakthrough in this model is that they are using a dual stream to single stream hybrid model design for video generation. The idea here being that the video generation side of things and the text prompt side of things are actually split apart and processed with two different streams and then brought together. This approach may at least partially help solve the reason that we tend to end up with Morphe or incoherent AI video outputs is that essentially the model is trying to pay attention to too much at once. It's also one of the reasons that sometimes you'll prompt something and the model will just straight up ignore you. Uh, it's you know busy thinking about other things which is also the reason that I forgot to run the dishwasher last night. See, AI, it's just like people. We're gonna move over to some of the other big key features in the model in just a minute, uh, but I did just wanna point out that Padphone put together kind of a mock ad spot for the Hoon Wan model. Uh, I'll have it linked down below if you wanna check out the full thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, the imagery here is really fairly stunning, A. It probably is all text to video here. I don't believe that image to video has been implemented in the model yet, though 
that is coming. Uh, but again, just with text to video, this very much shows that you can accomplish some pretty incredible, you know, visuals out of it. There's one shot coming up here at the end, this one right here. I mean, that's just like straight up inception. That's really, really great. Great job, Padphone. Now, some of the other big features that are coming out of this model is the fact for one, it can generate sound. Uh, yeah, take a listen to this. <laughs> This is something that we have seen flirted around with uh, just recently, Meta's movie gen flex that it was able to generate sound. But, uh, you know, of course, that was never released. Now we have it. Now, the sound here is prompt based. For example, uh, here we have birds chirp and tweet. And here is footsteps on wood in the weirdest haunting of all time. Yeah, I got to admit, this is very impressive, especially considering in this particular example, you can see how well timed the sound is in relation to the video. It's funny, this is not the first time that we have seen this particular technology. In fact, actually, I had to go digging it back. And yes, yeah, Sonic Vision LM, we initially looked at as a white paper back in January of 2024. So I think that just might show how long it takes for something to go from white paper all the way out to, you know, wide use. Additionally, the model is capable of doing lip sync and, you know, gesturing kind of along the lines of what we saw in Runway's Act 1. Uh, for example, and that apparently translates to, I haven't eaten apples for a year, so I went to the supermarket and stole a bag of apples. Do you think I should apologize? Now, there might be something lost in translation there, or our guy is like a klepto Johnny Appleseed. Uh, native Chinese speakers, please let me know in the comments below. And rounding out, we do have all of our you know single image to pose control type features, it, dancing TikTok girls. Sort of unsurprising, considering that Tencent has been all over this since uh, last year. Although admittedly, it has come a long way since anime girls doing TikTok dances. Uh, now we have photorealistic stone statues doing TikTok dances. And finally, rounding out, we have kind of a live portrait expression generator based off of input video. Uh, as we can see here, the middle driving video is, I, I think that's Bella Porch. Uh, and then obviously we have our output video over here. Now, once again, this Tencent model is open source, meaning you could go download the code right now and start running it. That said, uh, the GPU requirements are pretty high. Uh, to do 720 by 1280, the minimum uh, requirement is 60 gigs. At 544 by 960, it's 45 gigs. They actually recommend a GPU with 80 gigs of memory for better generation quality. So um, not all of you have a machine that is that powerful. But once again, because this is open source, I do think that we are going to see a lot of platforms begin adopting it. And again, because the code is available, they will begin tweaking it in all kinds of interesting ways. When some places start popping up to test the model, I will definitely link them down below. Sliding over to another big news story, World Labs has surfaced, and uh, this one's pretty big. World Labs, which is in beta, I actually don't have access yet, I'll have a link to the waitlist below, uh, allows you to essentially generate a world from a single input image. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of an asterisk there, it's a small one. But yeah, as you can see here, we can begin with this input image and turn it into essentially uh, a 3D generated world that you can move around and actually interact with, which is interesting. Now on the site, they do have a number of environments that you can explore. Um, they'll populate in here and you can use the WSAD keys to navigate. So just trying that out. Indeed, you can kind of peer around. Now, the slight asterisk here is that if you try to, let's say, wander off into the woods here, you'll end up kind of going out of bounds. So there is definitely a limit to uh, the amount of space that you can cover in this 3D environment. So this isn't like Game Gen O or X or whatever it was called, uh, which oddly was by Tencent as well, which promised to allow you to like endlessly wander around an open world that would continuously generate. Uh, oddly enough, that GitHub was scrubbed and uh, uh, the YouTube videos were taken down. So I don't know, like this may just be complete vaporware anyhow. So yes, while exploration is somewhat limited within World Labs, I still think it's a, it's super, super powerful uh, if you think about it, considering that this just begins with one image and we can now actually, you know, move our camera around. And all of this 
is going to be essentially generated. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty wild. And more than that, it seems to handle these like kind of abstract ideas fairly well here uh, with this kind of like paper quilling world. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty incredible. Um, again, limited somewhat in terms of movement. You can kind of move forward a little bit before you get out of bounds and to the right, to the left. Uh, interestingly, I accidentally discovered that you can Q and E as well to get... Uh, sort of rolls as well, so do a barrel roll. Some additional really cool features as well is the ability to change the focal distance of your image. So you could probably attain uh, something that's kind of a tilt shift sort of look as well. You could also use this to dolly in and dolly out on an image. Although I will say that on these kind of like wide angle shots, it does come off a little bit like the Jaws shot, uh, basically like dollying in and zooming out at the same time, uh, kind of that weird sort of parallaxing effect. But interestingly baked into World Lab is the fact that you can actually interact with the environment as well. So here we have a sonar thing, but uh, if you look, it's actually mapping to this rock. So it's not just like rippling out with like this sonar ping. It's actually, it somewhat knows um, the geography, dimensions, and um, like 3D shape of any particular object. Now, of course, the big use case here is, of course, being able to generate an environment in which you can place the camera, you know, just about anywhere. Uh, from here, you can, I mean, any number of methods. You can in-paint a character into this location. You can take um, video and roto it out of a character in that location, essentially using it as almost kind of a, a green screen environment. You can even take this like bedroom location that we're looking at here, take it over to runway. And all I did was like screen capture some movement, bring it into runway and kind of give it that retro sort of VHS kind of look. And yeah, we had, whoa, what was that? Well, that's terrifying. Runway just decided to put a uh, disembodied head there, or at least the mask of a disembodied head. Uh, yeah, apparently whoever's room this is, is a serial killer. But overall, yeah, this is really exciting. This is something that I've really been looking forward to in AI image and video generation for quite some time. So uh, I'm glad to see that it is beginning I think that 2025 is going to be a big year for being able to explore your generated environments. Some quick breaking news, just as I'm finishing this video up, today apparently has been a day of announcements. Uh, Krea has a new image editor uh, that they have just sort of teased out. I think, I believe this is in beta, uh, but this will be on its way. Um, so yeah, in painting um, looks pretty good. Uh, I'll definitely check this out when it becomes available. Crowd favorite Minimax have just uh, released Image to Video 01 Live, uh, which maintains consistency in, I guess, like artistic aesthetics, um, more like in the 2D animated anime uh, animation styles, where obviously we have uh, like this, and you know, we are now getting a character in movement that is not morphing into an actual person. Um, so, yeah, this looks really pretty good. I will definitely dive into this in a later video. And Sora is being teased yet again. Apparently the API is back after last week's leak and uh, Bill Peoples, one of the leads at Sora, uh, just tweeted back correct to uh, Rune's tweet uh, that OpenAI is unbelievably back. Does anyone care? I don't know. Do you care? Let me know in the comments. So that's it for today. I mean, that's it for today. A brand new video model and the ability to generate a 3D world from one image. That's it for today. Uh, as always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.